All right, in today's lecture, we're going to be discussing the Einstein field equations. All right, so what's our motivation for uh, learning about the Einstein field equations in a cosmology course? Eventually, we want to understand the evolution of the universe, and we're going to derive uh, the Friedman equation that will help us get to the evolution of the universe. And we'll, we, we will use uh, Einstein's field equations to derive uh, the Friedman equation. All right, so what is Einstein's field equations? It is G mu nu plus capital lambda little g mu nu is equal to 8 pi g over c to the fourth times t mu nu. All right, so what is this? Capital G mu nu is called Einstein's tensor. Um, it is equal to R mu nu minus one half. R G mu nu, where G mu nu is the metric. R is called the scalar curvature or sometimes called the Ricci scalar. Ricci scalar. And this is called, this R mu nu here is called the Ricci curvature tensor. So the curvature tensor, the Einstein tensor, or the Ricci curvature tensor has information about the curvature of space-time. In other words, it has information about the second derivative of the metric. So this is proportional to, so the Ricci scalar tensor, uh, the Ricci tensor is proportional to terms that have order G, let's see, mu nu, we're going to do second derivative. Oh, let's rewrite this. Second derivative, I'll do alpha, beta, and sigma, and we'll do rho. Okay, so this Ricci curvature tensor is proportional to the second derivative of the metric. This tensor here, the source term for the curvature is called the stress energy tensor. And lambda is the cosmological constant. And later you'll learn that the cosmological constant is connected to this idea of dark energy. Okay, so that's the Einstein field equations, but let's back up for a moment and give you some context as to uh, some intuitive feel for what these equations represent. And uh, 
and make a connection to Newtonian gravity. So in a Newtonian understanding of gravity, we have Poisson's equation, which is nabla squared of the potential is equal to four pi g rho. And rho, the mass density, this is the mass density, represents the source to Poisson's equation. And the left-hand side represents um, represents curvature of the potential. And in an analogous way, if we go up here to this equation, the left-hand side here, g mu nu and lambda g mu nu, uh, represent the curvature of space-time, so the second derivative of the metric, and the right-hand side represents the source term. So there's equivalence between t mu nu and density. So in relativity, there is an equivalence between mass and energy. All right, we have E equals MC squared. So there's equivalence between mass and energy. And everyday experiences or just Poisson equation tells us that mass is a source of gravity. Therefore, energy must be a source for gravity as well. Okay. So we're gonna, this is gonna lead to building up our understanding of the stress energy tensor. Um, to get there, I'm gonna give you some intuitive feel for what does the stress energy tensor mean? So first of all, let's look at this quantity V times rho. So what is V times rho? Well, it has units of mass, per volume, which is length cubed times length per time. All right, so this cancels with one of the lengths there and we have squared. And so this gives us rho times V has units of mass per length squared per time. In other words, rho v is the flux of mass across some surface. And let's be specific. Let's say we have rho times Vx. Then this is the flux 
of mass across a surface with constant x. Or in other words, is the flux of mass in the x direction. We'll also notice that rho is equal to the mass of the individual particles making this mass density times the number density. Okay, so this leads us to note that rho vx is equal to mass times the number density, little n, times vx. And then if we have just rearrange, we have m times vx is equal to n. And then mass times vx, that's momentum. And so now we have the momentum in the x direction times the number density. In other words, v rho x is also the momentum density in the x direction. Okay, so remember, we have an equivalence between mass and energy. So if mass is um, a source for gravity, in other words, a source for the curvature of space-time, energy needs to be source as well. So what is this? Rho Vx Vx, all right? So we have rho times Vx times Vx. What is that? Well, you might recognize this. This has units of mass times velocity times velocity divided by volume. And so that is a kinetic energy density. Well, let's, let's rewrite this. Rho Vx. And I'm just going to put parentheses here times Vx. That's the same thing. Let me rewrite this Vx. There we go. All right. Now, with the parentheses, I'm making a clear indication that rho Vx is a momentum density. And up here, uh, let's see, up here, we had a mass density times a, vo uh, a velocity. And that gave us the flux of whatever that density is. So it was the flux of mass across a surface. So the mass density times velocity gives you the flux of mass across a surface. Well, here we have the momentum density in the direction x times the velocity. So this is flux of momentum. x in x direction. All right. Now what about I just multi I did rho vx times vx. What about rho vx times vy? Well, let me just put parentheses around rho vx. That is the momentum density in the x direction, but now we're multiplying by the velocity in the y direction. So this is flux in the y direction of momentum in x direction. Okay. 
So now we're starting to build up some intuitive feel of what happens when you multiply Vx times Vx, which is an energy density. Remember, energy density should be a source term to uh, Gr. So apparently this term is going to be a source term. And notice that there are, there are two indices upstairs, x and x, in this. Um, in other words, this represents a tensor, a rank two tensor. So we're gonna be able to construct a rank two tensor that represents the energy density in, um, in GR. So we're gonna need a rank two tensor. Hence T mu nu. So this up above here is just building up the intuition that we're going to need uh, something like an energy density, and then it needs to be a rank two tensor. Another way to see that this needs to be a rank two tensor is remember that, so here's rho, and if we multiply by C squared, then this gives us the rest mass energy density in a volume. Well, this is just equal to the mass times C squared times the number density. And we can ask, what is the, um, what is the energy density in a boosted frame? So some frame that is moving with respect to us uh, at some velocity V, what is that? Well, something that we haven't derived in this class, but um, you do in a relativity class, this energy density is equal to m times gamma, and then there's c squared, and then n times gamma, or m in c squared times gamma squared. The important point here is that each of these gammas represents a transformation. If we're going from O to O prime, this is the transformation for the time component, one gamma. And so here's another lambda, right? The second one. So there are two transformations here. And once again, if you have two transformations, that implies that you're dealing with a second rank tensor. And hence, another motivation for T mu nu. So we need, the source term is a second rank tensor, T mu nu. So what is T mu nu? The zeroth component, the zero zero, represents the energy density the t0i component represents the energy flux across the ith surface Ti0 represents momentum density and Tij is the flux of I momentum across J surface. And specifically, T mu nu, whoops, there we go. T mu nu is equal to 
rho, the rest mass energy density plus pressure times u alpha, where u alpha is a four, the components of the four velocity, u beta, oh, whoops, I used mu and nu, so we need to keep those free indices the same. So mu and then u nu plus g mu nu times the pressure. This is the stress energy tensor. In the co-moving frame, so if there is no um, there is no motion of the fluid with respect to you. However, remember the particles are, uh, this, is, this is a fluid in which the particles themselves are moving, which causes temperature and pressure and things like that. The components of T mu nu in the co-moving frame, T mu nu, in the co-moving frame are rho zero, 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 P, zero, 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 P, zero, 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 P. All right. And that concludes our introduction to the Einstein field equations, the left-hand side, which represents the curvature, and the right-hand side, which represents the source, uh, which is the stress energy tensor.